Did you read that whole bag already? No, but I'm going to. He's about halfway through it. One down to one piece. Yeah, I like yeah. this. It's warm in here, so you might want to take this jacket off. It's warm? Because I'm not warm That's today. what I'm always <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's, it's me then. I apologize. All right, Chief. Whenever you're ready. Nope. Get set. Get set up. We're early. Okay, we're all back. Chief has joined us. So, good afternoon. Um, I, my understanding is uh, you're looking for for information um, specific to issues related to replica guns or toy guns and the frequency of observance here in the city. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that uh, in looking at the stats, over the past three years, so I'm sorry, over the past, three three? Three, three. I did say three, but I was, Jim. <laughs> but I was actually incorrect. I meant to say six as opposed to 60, okay. so six. All right. Over the last six years, we're averaging about, we recover uh, approximately seven of these uh, BB, airsoft, replica, toy type guns. Um, year to date, we are actually at eight of these types of weapons. The most recent one was uh, recovered actually just earlier this afternoon. Uh, we had some kids who stole a, uh, a vehicle and were uh, driving around town with clown masks on, brandishing a, uh, one of these little BB guns. Uh, they as they were driving them through, them. they did. They, <laughs> they went for the grand. Prize. They went for the trifecta. They did. That's how you get to the front page of CNN. Yes. Mm. Unbelievable. So, um, as far as what other jurisdictions in this area, uh, they they're not doing anything different other than what we're currently doing. We do uh, prohibit the discharge of these types of weapons inside the city limits, mm -hmm. and. Um, as far as uh, close calls go, I'm really not sure. I mean, we haven't had any officer-involved shooting related to them, so I, I don't exactly know what the intention was behind that question, but if you can give me some more information, I'll be more than happy to try to parse that together for you. So the seven, if, if I understand, the seven that you, found, that you have or the eight this year, were they involved in a, some kind of crime? Or potential crime. Um, or yes. Or they just collected. Yeah, and that's my. They're, guess that's my they're usually found uh, on the individuals. Oh, okay. So, so during the process. For another, uh, I'll give you an example: the theft of a bicycle uh, near Cedar Crossing, and we recover a, a BB gun and a clip. Uh, we have. Here's an assault with a weapon, and this particular individual was using the, the airsoft gun in that particular case. Um, we have a narcotics possession found in possession of another BB gun. So you're going to find the range. Yeah. So maybe three were found, like in the commission of a crime? Oh no! I was just reading samples. Okay. I mean, I'm looking. I'm looking over the span of the um, six years. Right. I'm just giving you some examples. Huh. Other Sorry, questions? what was that? Is it five dollars? Do I have to pay? It's a quarter. <laughs> it's only a quarter. We're cheap. Is it five dollars? Is it a quarter? I've got both. <laughs> five twenty-five. Did we? This was here from. I, I, uh, yeah, you found this? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. To be more clear, we have a copy of um, uh, Cumberland's. A copy for the chief. I, yes. Okay. Charge of firearms. 
Well, the, the first page is our code. And so basically, our code says it is unlawful for any person to discharge or set off any air gun, bean shooter, slingshot, or other light device within the corporate limits of the city. So that's like just a blanket, mm -hmm. not allowed to do it. Correct. Um, and there's no exclusion in here for training facilities, gun ranges, pest control companies that use them. So uh, I, I was looking, Cumberland updated theirs this year uh, to, to include some exclusions for the training facilities. Because I know that was one issue when we first started talking about it that, that came up as, as, as the pest control. Um, as far as what's sold, I, I don't know if Mr. Tillman found anything as far as what we're allowed to uh, restrict or anything like that as far as stores. I, I don't even know if we're allowed to do that. Um, the, basically what I found so far is that the, the federal law is, you know, regulates it. And rather than the law that regulates firearms, it's basically, I think, the trade or commerce, one of those uh, federal commissions. Um, that regulates the sale of the toy guns and what and how they have to be marked. But they specifically exclude BB guns, pellet guns, um, and I think that my understanding of the law is, is that you can't prohibit the sale of those items in the city. Um, and that the, I think the government, all, I mean, California has passed a law regulating that there, there's going to be like the color coding and the identification of the BB and pellet guns as well. The federal government hasn't done that at this point. Um, and, you know, there's been no case law really yet challenging, as far as I can find anyway, the California statute. Um, but I'm not 100% sure it would withstand a federal challenge. In New Jersey, uh, what I saw was New Jersey, and this because it's, it's a state law in New Jersey, but they regulate the air guns and BB guns as they, they distinguish as firearms. It as firearms. Yeah, they do. And and so different that's, states that's do different things. Beyond. Maryland has not regulated it. They don't they don't go there. And they, they just let the federal government regulate the toys and there's really no regulation of the, the other guns. Um, but you know the only thing I found that I thought might be problematic is that the federal law actually says that the provisions of this section shall supersede any provision of state or local laws or ordinances which provide for markings or identification inconsistent with the provisions of this section provided that, and then it says, no state law shall prohibit the sale or manu manufacture of any lookalike, non-firing non collector replica or antique firearm developed prior to 1898 or no state shall prohibit the sale other than prohibiting the sale to minors of traditional BB, paintball, or pellet firing air guns that expel a projectile by some means. I mean, I'm not reading it literally here, but so the, the federal government will not let you prohibit the sale, but you can regulate the use of them. There's no question about that. California has gone so far as to say, well, since the federal government doesn't regulate the markings of BB or pellet guns, we're going to pass a law regulating marking BB and pellet guns. Um, but, but I'm not, I, I'd like, I have not yet seen it, but I'd like to see what their attorney general wrote about that before they pass the law, because um, it's, it, it's not 100% clear in my mind, yeah. If, if we could, uh, I'm, I think we need to separate the discussion into two pieces, because originally my interpretation of what the request was, was to identify uh, a, a toy gun in some way to distinguish it from a real gun so that the children, the issue was originally we, we talked about, was a, children ac a child accidentally getting shot by carrying a gun. This that we're talking about now is totally, in my opinion, is totally different yeah. because now we're talking about regulating the discharge of a, of a gun or a, a look-alike gun within city limits. There, I think there's two separate issues there. Well, the, the other issue uh, is that the, the federal government defines what's a toy and that's not in, a pellet gun isn't a toy and neither is a BB gun. BB gun or a So they, they put them in a separate category. Gotcha. Um, and the, the toys really, the, as far as the toys go, 
there's really nothing we can do. Federal law, law regulates right. the marking of toys. And they're all now required to have certain markings and identifications that I'm guessing most police <coughs> forces have been familiar with for some time. Mr. Ireton, you had a question. I'm not sure. Um, if, if we make it so that we have, we're able to differentiate between the toy gun and the regular gun, and the toy gun goes off, I'm trying to figure out how to slide somewhere in between one is different from the other and when one becomes the other. So let's say we do regulate it and it goes off and it sounds like a gunshot anyway. If someone going to say, well, you, you regulated what it looked like, we well, didn't regulate, they couldn't, they couldn't um, discharge it. Well, it's already illegal to discharge right. a BB gun in the city or, mm -hmm. or an airsoft gun. Right. I just, yeah. I'm trying to go back to the list. But, but not a cap gun. So your, your example of just making cap a noise. Right. Right. Yeah, the, yeah, that's, the, that's the, not the circle things. Because it is largely indistinguishable, undistinguishable, indistinguishable, indistinguishable, indistinguishable between some of the sounds of toy guns and and regular guns. Just as the sound of an ambulance can sound just like the sound of a police car, unless you're the trained ear to know which one is different from the other. As an aside, just for a while, I'm thinking of it. Is the use of any of those guns? Does that change what the what the uh, the violation or the charge would be? In other words, if, if someone used a handgun in commission of a uh, <coughs> toy gun in commission of a robbery, it, it does have a, an impact in in the criminal court. It does. Yes, it does. It's it's a lesser impact. Does because is it is it because it's not. I, I, operational, I, an operational firearm yeah. per se that would actually fire. A well, they can still be charged with assault. They can. It is, is an assault. assault. Right. That makes, uh -huh. But the penalty is less severe for so, that. Hand. So can I ask? I mean, I, I see. I'm kind of formulating a little matrix here. Um, uh, no doubt. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> not so not the see, matrix. I want to see you fly. <laughs> um, but I mean, there, there's kind of four categories of things that we're talking about regulating, and then four different types of weapons that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I think, and I could be wrong, but I see the four categories, or the four types of weapons as toy, airsoft, you know, something, you know, which isn't going to do serious injury, BB and pellet, which can, mm -hmm. uh, and then replica firearm, which mm -hmm. I call a fourth category. And maybe I'm leaving something out here. Oh, I'm not touching mm -hmm. fire, real firearms here. And then, um, and then I see design, sale, possession, and discharge. And on the discharge, it seems that we have the city ordinances to cover that. Um, and it actually, I think it does say that um, licensed shooting ranges between 6 a.m. and 11 p.m. in the city, um, you're well, allowed to discharge. That's for firearms. Right. That's a separate. I mean, I know it's under the same thing, but. No, because according to federal law, a BB gun is a firearm. Okay. No, it, it's not. It's, it's not. not? No, so New, Jersey. Jersey. Mm. New Jersey. New Jersey said they Jersey. named it, but federal law distinguishes between, I, I don't remember the exact words they use, but in other words, if, it, if an explosion causes the, the bullet to go versus air or uh, CO2, they, they interpret that differently. Okay. So, so toy and replica discharge is inapplicable. Airsoft and BB and pellet guns, we haven't addressed. We have no regulation on the discharge of airsoft and BAB and pellet guns inside the city. Is that fair to say? Or would you disagree? No. Say no, I, I, repeat that again. Regulated. Uh, they are right. I think they are right. Right. So, I'm not sure. Yeah, air, air, would you include airsoft in that? This is air gun. Okay. So, I mean, it didn't. Even if it fires, if it fires a plastic projectile, it's still. Yeah. Because they got it categorized with beam shooters and slingshots airsoft. and other like yeah. device. Bones. Bean Such bean as your paintball guns. You gotta say it like that. Bean shooters. Bean shooters. Bean shooters. Um, but yeah. paint, paintball guns would also. The paintball I, guns. I would argue would fall under this as well. Okay. What about so design? We're talking feds cover toy design. Yes. Do the feds cover the design of airsoft and paintball guns? Um. No, not 
They may under a product safety rule, but I, I don't that I I haven't looked at that part I, yet. I, I wasn't able to find them. What about yeah. BB and pellet? Um, they, they exclude the BBs and pellet guns from the federal regulations with regard to firearms. But they and then they treat toys differently than the BB and pellet guns. Toys are regulated by instead of being regulated by the firearms agency, they're regulated by like a I forgot which one it was. It's in here. Maybe commerce. I can't remember. But, uh, but then they, they kind of let BB and pellets fall in between, as far as I can tell in the federal law. And, but they do say that, they, I mean, the, the, the same law that says what the markings will be on a toy says that they exclude the BB and the pellet guns from that classification and then say that any state or local law is preempted with regard to the markings of you know, it's, it's, so that's why it's, it's not 100% clear to me. California has, I think, interpreted that to mean that because they excluded those, we can regulate them separately. But it's not, if they do it all in the same section, and, you know, it's, it's. So what about. Because the, the Fed said you don't have to mark them, maybe so that's the law. What about the sale of toy guns? There's no real. Yeah, we, but w the way I understand toy, it, because again, it's two um, separate categories. Toy, right? just regular toys. We can't yeah. prohibit the sale of those items in the city of Salisbury. Toy okay. guns or. What about uh, airsoft and paintball? Um, I think not. What about That's BB and pellet? So far. I, no, I think that BB and pellet, because they have a projectile, are treated like the airsoft, if I'm not mistaken. So you can't restrict the sale? Yeah, although the airsoft guns. They, they usually are marked, aren't they? I mean, that's usually, my own recollection. Usually bright color, but not necessarily. Yeah, airsoft or some of them. Orange tips. I've seen. They're, yeah, they're, they're usually the clear, tips. which is part yeah. what's required by some of the statutes. Yeah. So I may, I may be mixing them up, but clearly the pellet and BB guns are treated differently. What um, about the sale of replica firearms? And they, they address the issue of replicas, and you don't have to mark those as long as, you know, they're basically sold as a antique replica type you I mean you can't market them to kids if you were to market them to kids and they were very you know real replicas I think they'd be treated as a toy at that point because they talk about marketing them in for display and, and that kind of stuff so. so what about the possession of toy guns <laughs> I don't know what about the possession of airsoft and uh, beat paintball guns I, th I, I, mean, I don't think there's anything you could you could you could regulate those. Could. I think possession I'm of those items. I'm on the just street. asking theoretically. No, I, th I think theoretically you can regulate those. BB and pellet guns. Yeah, and you can do a lot more regulation. If what, the one thing the federal law says, you can't prohibit the sale of. That's the language they use it. But you, but I think the courts have interpreted that to mean that you can regulate those items. So, if I mean just that little matrix, there's. Seemingly no regulation of the design of BB and pellet guns. Is that what you're saying? But of the, the these were this the laws that I looked at were dealing with the markings of them, not the safety issue. There may be regulation with regard to safety issues, but I'm not that I haven't gone there yet. So really, it's, we're talking about possession. Is sale is not really in our wheelhouse. Discharge is, is and is covered. So you're talking about possession. And I think possession can be regulated to some degree. I mean, you could go so far as to, if, if you go so far as to make it impossible to sell them, because I think some local governments were allowing sales, but the, the, the merchants had to deliver them outside city limits and that kind of stuff. So. Can I ask this question? Actually, it's two parts. I think, I don't know whether or not it has to happen this evening. If the two people I'm going to ask this question to want to take time to. I would like from Councilman Bode if he could help us with a clearer. I don't want to say reason, because I don't think that's, that's anybody have a better word? A clear rationale for, for if if we were to do something, what that rationale is. 
from the chief if we could, is there, is there, does law enforcement, and I'm not saying I agree or disagree, does law enforcement believe that there's a pressing need for this, or is it something else, some other tool in the toolbox that they might want to, I'm willing to help out in any way with yeah. a vote, I just, I, I, and I'm not saying the matrix, the mm -hmm. Keanu Reeves over here has confused <laughs> me even further, but he has cleared up a little bit more with it, with this doesn't sort of apply because it already applies here. I don't know if anybody else feels that way, I just, and I, believe me, I am guilty of this in every way, shape, or form, of it going from this, and then all of a sudden we're out, you know, we're out here, and somehow getting right back to the, to the I'd like to get right back to the original question. I don't know if that helps first, or... No, no that, that, that helps. helps. I'd like to know what that the helps. original question was myself. That helps. Okay. Well, it, I had a couple uh, residents approach me over the course of a couple months, and they were different people not connected. I think they had an issue with one of their kids that had come in, come in with one of these. They, they, the police weren't involved in it, but uh, so their concern was some of the availability in some of the stores, because some of them are not locked up. Kids can just go in, cut them off the shelf, cut it out, and you know they can go do. And I know incidents over the past few years, some of the police have recovered that they believe were used in, in robberies or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and, and some of them, we, we think that they were probably stolen and that it was probably kids that had used it. Now, the results of those investigations, I don't know. I just provided information. Um, but I think that was some of the concern where some of the parents were seeing that, that these were readily available. And, and some of them I'd seen where some states had banned it. And then the, there was uh, the issue that happened in Baltimore with the, the child that was shot and the child that was killed in Cleveland. So I think some of them were concerned uh, that there was access to them and, and that, you know, kids, I mean, we've, we've all been kids and we've all, you know, I, most of my life I grew up out in the country. So we were, yeah. you know, I, I was shooting at 22 when I was five years old. So, I mean, you know, but in the city it's, it's, it's different because it's denser and, uh, you know, when I was when I was shooting, there was a woods behind me, and there was nothing back there. If I got my backyard and do it now, my neighbor's house is right there, so you can't you can't do that. Um, but I think that was part of that came from the concern of that that they look real, uh, that mm -hmm. uh, kids have them and they're and they're out and about walking around in the neighborhoods with them, basically. And a lot of people, whether it's a police officer or whether somebody else sees it. And, and they and they and they report it when an officer comes up, you know, and if the kid points it, how quick does a, a police officer uh, have to make a decision whether it's real or whether it's not? And and we don't want the child to get shot, but then we also don't want a situation that what if a child had gotten hold of a real gun and shot and shot a police officer? So you know, both ways we don't want anybody to get you shot. Want you want to be able to identify. And, and, yeah. and no police officer, you know, first parent do understand. want to live with the rest of the life that their child was killed having a, a BB gun. And no police officer wants to live with the rest of their life knowing that they had done that. Yeah. Um, so that, I think, was, was the heart of it on allowing, like, what are, I mean, the question was, what are we allowed to do? Um, and... Uh, you know, other than at least we're, we're talking about it, it's it's up front. Maybe parents can educate their children. You know, when we were always taught, whether it's a toy, whether it's not, you don't point, you never point, point at anybody. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Only to that yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, but today is, is part of it, as some things have changed in their culture, those lessons aren't, aren't ingrained in children, and sometimes it's too late. So that was that was the heart of, of the issue. The other, with I brought this out was as I looked at what our code said and and then I, I tried to look at other towns and cities in Maryland that had that had taken action and so far the only one I could find was, was Cumberland that had actually gone through it. Um, and that but this what that's a separate that's a separate issue because that's just So you know, Cumberland doesn't address the toy well, gun. The toy gun, no, because I I think as, as Mark said, toy guns, which is a Everything's categorized differently, and that's regulated by federal yeah. law. It's, it's actually the Consumer Product Safety Commission who regulates okay. toy guns. 
You know, the, I, I don't disagree with anything you said, mm -mm. and I wish there was a way we could do this. My, my issue is we're limited as to what we can do. For instance, Delaware is right, right and, and if they don't initiate something like this, and Virginia does, you know, I'm. It just we're caught in the middle. If you were caught, yeah. <laughs> do we, do we you know, should it be a? To you, instead of what <coughs> can't we do? Would the, could we ask the mayor and the chief to come back with some options about what we could do? In in oh, what a day. Instead of, in lieu of, in addition to what we have already, is it a series of public service announcements? Is it, is it, um, take a look at the, I, um, I say this, no, I don't say this with all due respect, but the Daily Times would love to do a story with a gun on the front of it, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. So is there an opportunity there to, to Use maybe answer. take the instances that the chief has, and this is really up to you two, not to me, it's just a suggestion, and say, these, these were the toy guns we were looking at. And, and show it to the public and say, this is what parents, maybe as a public service to them as well. I don't know, I'm just, I'm saying. I, I like that idea. Because yeah, they need so to advocate. With the law, the federal, the state, uh, the use of the word contrivance in, in this law from Cumberland, which I'm not sure, or any other contrivance. Um, you know, it, it seems to me that it really comes down to the parent knowing that this is a toy gun, the kid knowing that this is the toy gun, the officer knowing the toy gun, and that everybody trying to act accordingly. And we may only be able to get to that point uh, through outreach. Mm -hmm. I, I like that idea, especially the public service announcement type yeah. stuff and, and things that we can take a, a positive stance as opposed to a, a negative. Well, you want to give somebody something they can Instead of taking yeah. Away and yeah. I, I, yes, that was yeah, pretty good. Did. You really did. That was pretty good. Okay. Can you tell us about Aleppo, <laughs> Mr. Mayor? Uh, can I can I Chief? also add to and and I would be remiss, but uh, if I did, <coughs> but again, you know, um, I can't get enough training. I can't get enough funding for training to safely de-escalate on, on a routine, you know, everyday basis. I'm not saying that the officers of the Salisbury Police Department and, and our colleagues um, that we share policing responsibilities with here in this region do an outstanding job confronting these issues and dealing with them and managing successful outcomes. So I think another component would be an which goes hand in hand with the educational piece for our parents out there that are looking for solutions as well, is just to be mindful of the different training components that come along with this as well. You know, it can never go stale. It can never be um, too much when it comes to de-escalation, when it comes to approaching these things safely, when it comes to responding with adequate resources so that you can safely handle the situation as it comes up. It's a far cry. Personally, I'm not sure where I stand on a lot of these things. The, the, the emails that we got from the Eastern Shore, I don't know, what was it, the gun club? Not the gun club. It was I, NRA. NRA. Yeah, just, NRA. you know, kids need to be taught. If, if, if that were the case, the kids need to be taught, then the first thing we would be teaching them is not to point them at other people. And that's a fine line between other people and animals or targets or, or whatever it is uh, that, they, that, that they want to do. But if there are instances, Chief, that you have that you can use as examples of how we can better interact with the public, that would be great. But, you know, that's something that you and the mayor have to do. Certainly. Anything else? No, I'm, I'm fine. I really actually, I agree with what Mayor is doing. I appreciate him doing it because we need to make people aware and b making them know that we are aware of what's going on and how things are being done other places. So that sends out a signal to people that, to let them know that we care and we, we want them to be educated 
on the guns and not having guns. And I really wish they would color code the guns so they could be no, you know, noticed when they're in um, this kind of trying time when police uh, is the, um, um, how can I say it? Um, when it's a standoff, you know, to know that this is not a real gun and so that either the child doesn't get killed, but, you know, I'll just research it and we can keep researching and keep doing some more um, advocating for these things. And I have your back because I do, I, I, I'm, I hate guns. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, I do not like them. And I definitely do not like them for kids. So anything that you need me to help you do, I will so do that for you. Okay, anything else, Mr. Mayor? Just, I mean, without a doubt, I think uh, the chief and I need to talk about some things offline, but, but I, I see the I see the solutions that we're talking about is falling into three categories. Uh, one is public service and education, and you know that's certainly something uh, that I need to learn more about you know how right to frame that. Mm -hmm. um, um, the second is education and advocacy with stores directly. Well, actually, I'll add a fourth. Um, the third is training, the chief already addressed. The fourth is design advocacy. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I feel like we've got a responsibility if we want to see more universal um, prescription of the uh, you know, hot pink application <laughs> to, you know, to Lime green. toys, that, to toys that yeah. aren't mm -hmm. going to be able to aren't going to do damage or, or harm to a human, um, which is going to draw a different reaction from an officer than, you know, a, a black or silver not toy. Um, and we, we've got a responsibility, I think, to talk to federal officials mm -hmm. about that. So yeah, I think our attention's Agreed. probably got to be focused on that. Um, so maybe we can talk and, and develop some pathways for that advocacy, uh, think about it, and, and maybe talk to our congressmen, our senators mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. you know, well, who, who's the right, where is the right forum to have that conversation? Yeah. Um, so maybe we can do some, some brainstorming and come up with some, some thoughts for how to handle that, and then collectively we can all do some advocacy as a part of this. Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate mm -hmm. it very Chief, much. My pleasure. Thank you. Your input. Okay, uh, I think we're, uh, anybody have anything else that we need to discuss? If not, we will recess uh, until six o'clock mm -hmm. and we will reconvene at six o'clock for our closed session. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>